Buying an entry-level DSLR from Nikon is not as straightforward as it sounds. Should aspiring enthusiast photographers step up from a compact go for the most basic DSLR in the range, the Nikon D3300, or pay a bit more for a camera with more features, namely the Nikon D5300. If you are agonizing over this choice, come along for enlightenment. Welcome back to Catnap and today we present you the comparison between the D3300 and the D5300 DSLR cameras from Nikon. So come on, let's learn together. The Nikon D3300 boasts a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor without an optical low pass filter to enable more sharper shots while there is also an ISO range up to 25600 and a fast continuous shooting rate of 5 frames per second. Meanwhile, the Nikon D5300 also has a 24.2 megapixel sensor without an optical low pass filter, expanded ISO range of 25600, 5 FPS continuous shooting mode, and so on. See the problem? So similar, aren't they? The main areas where it trumps the Nikon D3300 are more autofocus options, built in Wi Fi and GPS, and a flip out very angle screen. Oh, and the rear LCD has a few more pixels as well. That said, there is obviously the crucial difference of price. The Nikon D3300 3300's price tag for the body plus a compact 1855mm VR lens stands at around 319 British pounds or 545 US dollars or 35,000 Indian rupees, while the Nikon D5300 with the same lens will set you back about 140 British pounds or 150 US dollars or 9,600 Indian rupees more. Just to compound the confusion, there is also the D5500, the replacement to the D5300. We'll leave that out of the equation here as the D5500 is a about 250 British pounds or 400 US dollars or 25,700 Indian rupees more expensive than the D3300. First, coming to the sensors, the Nikon D5300 has a 24.2 megapixel DX format CMOS sensor that lacks an anti-aliasing filter. Although this can increase the risk of moir distortions when photographing certain patterns, it's a small risk and is outweighed by the benefits of greater resolution. Despite being cheaper, the Nikon D3300 has a similar 24.2 CMOS sensor which also lacks the anti-aliasing filter, so they are quite similar in this ground. Coming to the image processor, both cameras use the Xpeed 4 image processing system which is also used on Nikon's higher-end SLRs, enables faster image processing, 5 frames per second rapid shooting and better control of image degradation or noise at higher ISO settings. Next to the ISO range, both the Nikon D3300 and D5300 have a native ISO range of ISO 100 to 12800 which can be expanded up to 25600. Keep the ISO below 1600 and you will enjoy relative clean low noise shots in low light conditions but it's good to know you have got all the extra sensitivity if you need it next we have the autofocus division leaving all the similarities behind the Nikon D5300 has a 39 point autofocus system based on nine cross type autofocus points this means that more autofocus points are available to cover a particular scene useful if you are photographing a group of people for instance or a sports match in comparison the entry-level Nikon D3300 only has 11 point autofocus system based on one cross type autofocus point. Now this may seem like a major difference but bear in mind that more experienced photographers often only select the most sensitive central autofocus point anyway, particular when taking portraits of still objects. So sure, it's good to have those extra autofocus points to cover a scene if you are less confident about selecting individual points, but it's not a deal breaker though. Next we have the continuous shooting. Any advantage the Nikon D5300 has when it comes to wider choice of autofocus points is evened out when it comes to continuous shooting. Both cameras will let you fire off a burst of 5 pictures per second in fine quality JPEG rather than RAW mode. Unless you are a sports or wildlife photographer, this should be more than enough and is obviously great for ensuring you get usable shots for fast moving action. Next coming to the screen, a key difference between the two cameras is the rear screen. The Nikon D5300 boasts a 3.2 inch screen which has 1,037,000 dots or pixels which can be viewed at different angles. The screen provides a lovely clear view with lots of detail visible making it particularly useful for shooting candid street compositions or in live view mode. The screen isn't touch sensitive though. In comparison the Nikon D3300 has a fixed 3 inch screen with 921,000 dots or pixels. 
Next coming to the connectivity, again the Nikon D5300 aces its sibling here. Wi-Fi and GPS connectivity come as standard on the more expensive camera, while you will have to buy an adapter for each of it to work on the D3300. It's easy to connect the Nikon D5300's Wi-Fi system to your Apple or Android smartphone, but you will need to download the Nikon Wireless Mobile Utility app to control the camera. For the Nikon D3300, you need to buy the WU-1A adapter which costs around 50 British pounds or 60 US dollars or 3850 Indian rupees. Now coming to the build quality and dimensions, their shell is made from one piece of Cerebu CFTRP which is a type of a polycarbonate. This monocoque construction omits the usual joints and seals, making the camera stronger. The Nikon D5300 is slightly heavier, weighing in at 530 grams with battery and memory card compared to the Nikon D3300's 460 grams. You'll hardly notice an extra 70 gram in practice though. And both cameras have similar dimensions. Next coming to the battery life, guess what? Both cameras share the same battery too. The EN-EL14A can power up to 700 shots on a single charge. Next coming to the kit lens that comes with the cameras, both cameras now come bundled with the latest retracting AF-P 18-55mm f by 3.5 to 5.6 G VR kit lens, making it suitable for both still and video capture thanks to the new stepping motor. It's also much shorter when retracted than its predecessor, getting around the complaint that previous entry-level Nikon DSLRs have felt quite bulky and awkward. Some kits are available with the older non-VR lens, so pay attention to the specs of the lens to make sure you get the kit you want. And finally, we come to the verdict. Given the large number of similarities between the two cameras, it really boils down to how much you value built-in Wi-Fi, a flip-out screen and a few more autofocus points, not to forget the GPS sensor inbuilt. The guts of both cameras are not massively different. Both are made from sturdy monocoque casing and both have an easy-to-understand graphic interface to help beginners figure out camera functions. If money is tight, we recommend going for the Nikon D3300 and if extra money becomes available, put it towards an extra lens. A standard prime lens like the AF-S 35mm f by 1.8G is a great option or a tripod and some filters. A good lens and sturdy tripod will have more impact on the quality of your pictures than some extra autofocus points and built-in Wi-Fi and GPS. As for the screen, very angle LCDs are nice to have but photographers have lived without them for a long long time. So that's it for now and we hope you liked the video. A million thanks to our dear subscriber family for your continuous love and support and until next time stay tuned for more.